Today I want to talk to you about the three biggest mistakes that I see online seekers making all the time. And this might just be something that you're doing in your business which is holding you back from seeing the growth that you want to see and from seeing the, uh, the uh, being able to unleash your sales that you just see your sales skyrocketing on your online site. So if you're selling online, stay tuned. Now I'm going to get straight into it with uh, the first mistake that I see people making all the time is this false belief, this false perception that if you build it, they will come. If you make a website and you turn on that website, well, you're going to get, you're going to get sales on your site. Well, that's not entirely true. Um, in fact, that's not true at all. Um, and this is something that I see a lot of people starting out making this mistake far too often, where you just think that you're going to build a site, turn it on, and then watch the sales start ticking over. And people start to get really hard with themselves, hard on themselves, when uh, their site is live and they're not seeing those sales coming through. But you know, you got to understand, you got to appreciate the fact that you need to get momentum with your site. You need to do a bit of work on it to drive some sales to the site. And you got to start putting some effort into it, which will then yield uh, in the sales further down the line. So if you just put your site live and you make it live on the internet and it's on google.com, that doesn't guarantee you anything. You got to put in the effort, you got to put in the marketing skills, you got to get some traffic to your site. And that is what starts to bring in the sales, the first initial sales, and even ongoing. You know, once you've got those first initial sales, you can't just leave your site in autopilot. Customers need quick responses. They need somebody to be there to help them when they need it. They need to see that your site looks like there's somebody updating it. If your last blog post was from middle of last year, well, that's too long ago. You know, if you're going to have a blog, you've got to keep it updated. You want to update your images all the time because people can see if the site is stagnant. So if you are running an online site, you can't just leave it. You can't just think that if it's live, you're going to get sales. You've got to give it love and attention. And that's one of the biggest mistakes I see people making far too often. Number two in terms of the biggest mistakes I see people making all the time is that they don't know their numbers. I get approached at conferences that I speak at. People come up to me and they say, you know, my sales on my site just aren't uh, doing what I want them to do. You know, I've got a great product and I, my site looks great, but the sales aren't ticking over the way I want them to. Now, can you guess what my first question is every single time somebody says this to me? Well, what is my first question? It's always, what is your traffic? How, much, how, much, how many visitors are you getting to your site? How many people are coming to your site with the intention to buy? If you don't know that number, if you don't know all your numbers, then you're making the mistake number two in terms of the mistakes that I see people making most often. And these are, what, these are the mistakes that are holding you back from seeing the sales growth that you want in your business. Now, why do you need to know your numbers? Well, you need to know how many visitors are coming to your site because you could be thinking that, you know, you should be having X amount of sales, but you can really work out the amount of sales that you're going to be getting in any given month by looking at the amount of traffic that you're getting and by looking at the numbers, looking at the statistics of your conversion rate. If you're getting a thousand visitors a month and, you, and you've got a 1% conversion rate, well, you're getting 10 sales a month. Great. But if your conversion rate is 0.5, that's okay too. You just got to understand and, and manage your own expectations that your sales are going to be five, not 10. But if your two conversion rates are 2%, well, you're going to get 20 sales off that same amount of traffic. And if you don't know these numbers, if you don't know all of your numbers, in fact, you don't need to know all your numbers. These are the two key ones. How much traffic is coming, coming to your site on a regular basis and what is your conversion rate? That's what you've got to be knowing because that's what I'm going to ask you. If you come to me in a conference and say, you know, what's happening with my site? I've got great products. It looks beautiful. I'm just not getting the sales that I want. Well, you can expect me to ask you that same question. What's your traffic? What's your conversion rate? If you can't answer those two questions, I'm going to kind of send you off to say, well, find that out and then come back to me. Because without that information, I can't give you good feedback. I can't tell you, you know, maybe you're getting 10,000 visitors to your site and you're not getting any sales at all. Well, then we've got something to work with because then we're going to look at your conversion rate. Or if you're getting very little traffic and you've got great conversion rate, well, then we know where to look as well. We've got to work on your traffic. So these are the reasons that you need to know your, your numbers, right? You've got to know your numbers. And I know when you log into Google Analytics, it can get a little bit daunting. It feels a bit overwhelming. But just look at those high level numbers. Traffic, conversion rate. That's what you've got to focus on. Everything else falls underneath that. Cool. So that's mistake number two that I see people making far too often. So what's my third and final mistake that I see people making so often within their online sales? And this is holding them back from seeing the growth that they want. Well, that's just getting busy with busyness. Spending time 
updating pictures on your site, rewriting copy, um, adding another picture to a product that already has six pictures, and maybe even taking that picture and setting up lighting and then cropping it and editing that picture, and it takes you four hours to put a picture on a product. That is not helping your sales. Maybe in the smallest amount, but don't, don't you think that your time and effort would be better spent um, learning how to grow your business or focusing on creating a better uh, targeted audience for your Facebook advertising and learning how to do Facebook advertising or outsourcing that skill to somebody else, setting up that partnership, putting budget towards that. These are the business growing activities that we all know is what's going to see the bring about the growth and bring us the sales that we are so longingly wanting for. We know that there's high a, uh, pro, high a income producing activity and we all know that there's busyness, stuff that just takes up your day, takes up your time and makes you tired. Now we all know where we should be focusing our attention but it's so tempting to just stay with the busyness because we feel like we're accomplishing something and we feel super busy so we end, uh, get to the end of the day and we're like, I was busy the whole day, I must have accomplished something. But when you look back and if you're honest with yourself, did you do anything that helped to grow your business? If the answer is no, then you are making mistake number three and that's just staying busy with busyness. You need to prioritize your high A activities, the income producing activities, the stuff that's going to grow your business when you are working on your business and not just in your business. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. Make it your 2020 resolution that you're going to focus your time and effort on the high A, the high A activities, your income producing activities, and then save your afternoons and the rest of the time to focus on the busyness stuff, the stuff that just takes off your time. And the best thing you can do is Hire somebody to take that off your hands or outsource it completely. But you've got to recognize which activities you're doing are bringing in the money and which ones are just taking up your time. Now a little exercise I do every single morning, you can see it right here, is I list all my stuff I'm going to do in the day. I then prioritize them. I give myself A, uh, a activities. These A's are income producing activities, stuff that's going to help um, up the game of the business. Then I've got B's which are Things I should do today, but if I don't get to them because I'm still on A's, well, let's stay on the A's. And C's are things that if I don't get to them at all, they can be, they can be done next week. Then I go to my A's and I number them. One, two, three, four, five. And the same with the B's. One, two, three, four, five. However many you got. And guess where I start? I start with activity A1 and I work until that's done. I give it a good green tick. You can see I've got three green ticks already today. Then I go into A2, A3, A4, A5. Then B1, B2. And if you follow that system, that law process, it means that by 11 o'clock in the morning, you would have ticked off a whole bunch of A activities, income producing activities, activities that are growing your business and upping your game, bringing you in more sales and more money. And if you don't do that, well, you get to lunchtime and you've been busy with busyness and then the rest of the afternoon just goes the same way. You finish your day feeling exhausted and busy and you've done so much, but what did I actually do? You kind of think to yourself, oh, there was some, something I was supposed to do today and I didn't actually get around to doing it. If that's happened to you, well, I'll be honest, it's happened to me too. It happens. But if you want to uh, up your game and up your efficiency, your productivity, then follow that quick system. It's super easy. You can do it every morning. And that is what I do every single morning to maintain my productivity and make sure I'm not making mistake number three, which is staying busy with busyness. Now, I um, hope that these tips were helpful to you. If you want a whole bunch more tips next week, well, the following week, I'm actually going to be running a webinar, which is free to attend. I'll be doing it live and uh, the link is beneath this video. So if you want to be learning more about how to up your game with your online sales, how to grow your online business and how to make sure that you're focusing on the right activities and learning the right skills, well, sign up for the webinar. It's free to attend and I'm going to be giving uh, way more good tips. If you thought that this was valuable, hang around for the webinar. It's going to be amazing. So hit the link beneath this video. And I'll see you in the webinar, if not sooner, within the Facebook groups. Chat to you then.